and his mercy is everlasting. I think we ought to put our hands together in this place this morning and give God the praise that he deserves. Blessed be the name of our God. Praise his holy name.
name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise his, his holy name. Our reading this morning from Hebrews, the 10th chapter, verses 19 through 22 of the King James, it reads, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and heaven high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. The word of the Lord.
Yes, the Lord does change everything. He is the ultimate game changer. If things are not the way you wish them to be, call on the Lord. And he has a way of working it out. Father in heaven, great God of ours, good and gracious are you. And Father, we are so very thankful that you have saved our souls. Not because we deserve it, but because you desire it. And Father, we say hallelujah to your glorious name, dear Father. As we enter into this glad time of worship, I pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will accept our worship and accept us in worship. Father, I pray that we shall please you in praising your holy name. Father, allow us to experience your precious presence in this sacred and sanctified space today. Father, bless all over the sanctuary as we enter now into this worship experience. Lord God, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Lord, I pray on behalf of all that have gathered, all that are viewing, those that could not be here for one reason or the other. Lord God, I pray that you smile on us as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. We greet you, church, in the great and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for he is good, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. He is. He is good. He is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. And with a warm welcome, we welcome all of our visitors and guests this morning. Church, let's welcome them. Amen, because we know they could be somewhere else or they could be viewing some other service, but they chose to view our service or they chose to be with us here today. Praise the Lord's holy name. We have gathered, church, that we will celebrate the goodness of our God. How many of you know that God is good? Amen. He is definitely good. There's nobody like our God. Just a few things we'll say to you in the way of pastoral comments. The one in particular is that church in a world of chaos, contradictions, and uncertainties, it has become incredibly important to bring our attitude in alignment with the attitude of God about unsettling human actions. And I'm certain you are as I am, and I listen to current events, I keep up with what's going on not only in this city, this state, and this nation, but all over the world. And there are some very unsettling things that are happening all over. And we should not allow that to cause us to make us to act out of ourselves, but to be more and more like the Lord. Amen. With worldwide reports and exposure to constant current events, we must think and respond like our Heavenly Father, graciously and kindly. The one thing I have found out, church, is that God has all the facts. And all the facts we have is all the facts they give us. But God has all true facts. And true facts are like true figures. They cannot be denied. 
praise the name of the Lord. So let's continue to be that light in this dark situation. Let's be salt in these hard situations for salt is that chemical that erodes hard surfaces like concrete and metal. And so we ought to be like light, shining in dark places, and to be like salt. And salt also makes things palatable. So we being in this world, being like Christ, makes this world palatable to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So let's continue to be that light and that salt in the world. Um, also, we want to report the homegoing service of Mr. Gregory Coleman, who is the cousin uh, to Sister Donna Ming. That service will take place on July 1st, uh, this Friday, at William C. Harris, which is located at 1645 Redmond Avenue. The visitation will be from 8 to 9 a.m. there at that location. And the homegoing service proper will be at 9 a.m. And if you can't make it, they do request your prayers. Amen? Amen? Prayer is always in order. We also report to you the uh, transition of the brother to Sister uh, Crystal Moffis, who is here this morning along with her husband, Deacon Gary Moffis. Uh, he passed on last Friday. The arrangements are pending, so continue to lift her and her family up in prayer before the Lord. Um, uh, grieving is hard. She is taking it quite hard, and uh, we want you to pray for her that the Lord will comfort her. Amen. Amen. For he is the God of all comfort. Whatever comfort you may need, whatever form that takes, God has it. Amen. And let him be that comfort that she needs. Amen, church. Having said those things, now we're going to enter into another time of prayer. We want you to bow your heads with me. And let us take this time very seriously, knowing that we're not just talking into the air, but that we're actually talking with the Lord. All of us who have prayer lives, who believe in the power of prayer, who do pray, I pray right now that as we enter into this time of prayer, you come alongside of me with your prayers as we petition the Lord together today. Father in heaven, Though your abode is in heaven, we are confident in knowing that you're also here with us. You are the omnipresent God. You are everywhere perfectly at the same time. And so, Father, we call on you, not as if you are in the distance, but that you are here. And so, Father, we petition your throne today in saying thank you. Thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for your goodness, your goodness toward us. Father, there are those who try to be good to us, but their goodness is conditional. But Father, your goodness is unconditional. You're good to us no matter how we are. And we are thankful. Father, Heavenly Father, Forgive us of our sin. For we come before you, Master, just as we are. 
having sinned against you and have sinned against our fellow man. But we come because of Jesus. We come. Because of Jesus, we can come. And Father, we're thankful. But Father, we certainly need our consciences relieved. of the burden of guilt, of the sin that we have committed, whether in fault, in speech, or deed, we have certainly sinned. And Father, we know that you are our forgiving God. And Father, right now, we put it all before your altar, we lay it all before your feet, Father, that we might be refreshed and relieved of our sin. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah for your forgiveness. Thank you, Father. For the life, the ministry, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for him, Father, who came to save us from our sin, to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And we're so thankful, Father. For without him, we would still be tied up and tangled up in the ravages of sin. The grave would be our stopping place. And hell would be our eternal home. But because of your son, Jesus, we have been free from that condemnation. And Father, you have caused us to be your children, therefore having an inheritance that's incorruptible. And we say thank you, Father, for your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we are thankful for your Holy Spirit by whom we are born again by whom we are kept. He, he guides us into all paths of righteousness. No matter how much we pray, no matter how we study, no matter how much we learn, Father, we don't know enough to really know the way. So, Father, we're thankful for your Holy Spirit who knows the way. And, Father, I pray that you give us the presence of mind to always follow him Following him, Father, is not hard and it's not ambiguous. For he goes according to your word. And so, Father, keep us in the path, we pray, in following your Holy Spirit in the way of righteousness. Oh, Father, Father, Father. Father, bless those who are grieving today. Loved ones have transitioned. Grief has become a companion. But Father, we know that you know how to comfort us and relieve us of our grief. As we go through the various stages coming to our ultimate goal of acceptance, accepting your holy will. For, Father, you have told us in your word it's once appointed unto man to die, and after that the judge is the judgment. So, Father, we recognize and realize that we all must die. But, Father, a void has been created and Father, we feel a sense 
perhaps even an overwhelming sense of sorrow. Oh, Father, let us feel the comfort of your love today. Your kindness, Father. Bless them, Lord. Bless their families. Draw them closer together. Father, bless the sick and the shut-in among us. For there are many, Lord, having one malady or the other. And Father, we know that you are our healer and you are our helper. Even if you don't choose to heal us, Father, we know you'll help us to cope with our situations of illnesses. Lord, right now in the precious name of Jesus, let us be now so confident in the fact that you will keep us through it all. Lord, as we go moment by moment, step by step, be with us. And we know that you are, for even David said, even though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we know that you are with us, Lord. And grief can be such a shadow. Lord, we place it all in your hands. Have mercy, Lord. Father, bless this this church, this congregation of blood-bought, born-again people of, of yours. Lord, right now, have us to realize, Master, that we're not in this world alone, for you have not left us as orphans but you sent unto us your Holy Spirit. And your Holy Spirit is you. You abide with us, and you abide with us forever. Father, have us to be mindful of that abiding so that we won't feel as if all is lost. But Father, you are that God that knows how to open up doors that we cannot even see. Lord, right now, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, whatever these your people are going through, we need doors open. Help us, Lord, to see the doors. Help us, Lord, to go through the doors. Help us, Lord. Please, Master. Right now, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we're living in a time of crisis all over the world, all over the land. Men are rising up against men everywhere, Lord. Lord God, I pray right now in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we, your people, will be a solution to this problem and not a part of the problem. Father, let us do unto others as we would have others to do unto us. Oh, Lord, right now, in the precious name of Jesus, help this, your people, rise up and be all that we can be. In so doing, Father, you will be glorified, and we will have unmeasurable happiness being who you have made us to be doing what you have called us to do. Bless this church, Lord. Forgive of sin. Strengthen us where we're weak. Build us up where we are torn down, Lord. Right now in the precious name of Jesus, let us feel your presence in this service today, Lord. Let us leave here saying, did not our heart burn within? As we experienced you here today, Lord, let your word go forth. For when your word goes forth, it manifests 
all that lurks in darkness. Father, bless today. Bless the music ministry. Bless that they might bless your holy name and inspire every one of us. Lord, we love you. And we realize that we cannot do without you. Father, we look forward to the day when these masks will be removed. Tongues will be released. Shouts of hallelujah will reverberate within these walls. And we will be encouraged to keep on keeping on just a little while longer. Father, thank you. We surrender it all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And for his sake, we all say amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God bless your church and God strengthen you always. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures. Oh, yes, to all generations. Bless his holy name. You can see that Brother Dominique is not with us today. He is away in another venue. But he made sure that we had someone here with us this morning. He's not uh, a stranger to us. You haven't seen him in a while. This is Brother Baropi. Amen. <laughs> and an excellent drummer in his own right. Amen. Bless you.
counting of the cows. And when it looks as if we can't win, you wrap us in your arms and step in. Everything we need, you supply. You got things in control.
he made a way for you? Has the Lord made a way for you? If he has made a way for you, I invite you, if you so desire, to get up on your feet. And let's give God the praise he deserves in this place. He made a way out of no way. Just ask Moses and the children of Israel when they were trapped at the Red Sea and the Lord stepped in and parted the sea and they made it over to the other side. Yes, God is a way maker. He, he knows how to make a way out of your no way. You ought to praise him, church. You ought to praise him. Oh, you may not have this chance again. Don't care what's wrong with you. Don't care how you feel today. Give him the praise anyhow. Stand up on those bad knees. Stand up with your bad back. Stand up with your bad everything. And let us praise the Lord in his house. Don't be so stingy with your praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord from whom all blessings. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his name. Praise his holy name. Standing here only because the Lord has made a way. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go into those recesses of your mind, amen, you'll find again what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. He has moved mountains. Hallelujah. He has caused walls to fall. Hallelujah, church. Life can be something, can't it? But God, he does. Not only can he not, but he does not fail. He can do anything but fail. It's not in his makeup to fail. There's no failure in our God. I don't care what the naysayers say, but there is no failure in our God. I don't care what you're going through. There's no failure in our God. Praise his holy name. I have found that he's better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Oh, praise him, church. Praise him. That's it. Just be thankful. Just be thankful. Be thankful. Hallelujah. When God has brought you through something, even if you're still in it, he's keeping you. It's all right to praise him. Amen. One of the words, a few of the words that's right at the top of my vocabulary is thank you. First thing in the morning, the last thing at night, Lord, thank you. Can't you feel the presence of the Lord today? Don't you feel his wonderful presence? Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we're here again. We're here at this portion of the service that is pregnant and punctuated with preaching. 
Father, we pray that your word will be the terminating factor that will be delivered into our lives today. All other matters will have to bow to your word. Father, take me now and use me as an instrument of your holy will. Let your will be done. Help each one of us, Father, to empty our minds of all the challenging matters of life and open our minds to the truth of your word. And I pray that the words of my mouth as well as the meditations of my heart be found acceptable in thy sight. My Lord, my strength, my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have learned how to give God the praise, church. Praise his holy name. I used to be like some of those others that thought it didn't take all that. Amen. And if you're one of those, just keep on living. You'll find yourself shouting. Like the old folks used to say, you'll say you'll start running and ain't nobody chasing you. We don't want to take any more of your time than we need to. Let's look at <clears throat> St. Luke as we promised the 15th chapter again. Today we shall begin reading at the 25th verse and through the 32nd verse <clears throat> of the King James Version with special emphasis on verses 31 and 32. Again, that St. Luke 15th chapter, beginning to read at the 25th verse and through the 32nd, with emphasis on verses 31 and 32 of the King James, it reads, Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come home, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I any time thy commandment. And yet, you never gave us me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, that is the father, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet or right 
that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and he is alive again, and was lost, and is found. Verse 31, And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Verse 32, it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. The word of the Lord, you may be seated. And the title of this message at the end of this particular parable simply lost in the blessing. Lost in the blessing. We first preach from the fault, don't leave your blessing. Thereafter, we preach from the fault, don't mess up your blessing. Last Sunday, we preached from the thought, go back to your blessing. And today we will share with you from the thought lost in the blessing. Hmm. I don't know about anyone else, but as I read and prepared at length these messages and especially this one today, I saw myself there. There is no such thing as you cannot be lost in God's blessings. Mm. Lost in the blessing. The Bible tells us that judgment will begin at the very house of God. And I think it's important, it's imperative that we check ourselves. Amen, somebody. We can be so blessed. We even adopt sayings like, I'm too blessed to be stressed. I ain't never too blessed to be stressed. I wish I could not be stressed. But you get so lost in the blessing, we adopt sayings that are not even true. There ain't one person in here that ain't been stressed. Lost in the blessing. Now, the elder son of the two sons, this Christ presented and proclaimed parable, represents God's chosen people, the Jews, and in particular, those Pharisees and scribes, which was mentioned in verse 2. In this parable, the Lord Jesus Christ exposed and corrected the negative attitude those Pharisees and scribes harbored and had against the publicans, those unethical tax collectors, and sinners, those morally and religiously unclean class of people mentioned in verse 1. The younger son represents the downtrodden and downward publicans and sinners. He was the one that took his inheritance and went to a far country and blew everything on his own little crazy desires. Those who most needed, those publicans and sinners, were those who most needed the graciousness and kindness of Christ. 
those Pharisees and the scribes murmured against Christ. For having audience with them, those that they consider to be sinners, a part of the class that they called the great unwashed, they complained about it. That is why the Lord Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And we need to know today, church, when we start looking down on others, that God is an unbiased God. For the Bible tells us, for God so loved the world, not just you and a few others, but he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. That whosoever believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life. Those who represent Christ should have and are supposed to have the mind, the attitude and purpose of Christ. And I think that sometimes we lose sight on what the purpose of Christ is. Not was, but is. For the Lord said of himself, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19 and 10. Saints can be so caught up in being saints. Just as a Bible study moment for just a moment, saints come from the same word that sanctified comes from. It's in the same root. And sanctified means set apart, set aside for a particular purpose. Saints have been, those of us who have been born again, God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. He has set us aside, set us apart in this world for a particular purpose. Saints can be so caught up in being saints, they lose sight of the purpose for being set apart in this world. For God's special use. When folks see us, they ought to see some glimmer of Christ. When folk are around us, they, they ought to feel a warmth that comes from us. No matter what the situation, whether it's a situation of road rage, we ought to have the demeanor that brings it down. fellow followers of Christ, the blessing that God is and that he gives, he freely offers to all. You know how it is. You get so blessed of God, you think ain't nobody special with God like you. We can say we don't think that way. Yes, you do. And if you don't today, you did. And if you didn't and you don't today, you will. All right. All right. So let's open our heads, our minds to the Lord today. And let us engage in, into a little bit of introspection. Let's look at ourselves. Let's see ourselves. And this elder son, the blessings that God is, that he gives, he freely offers to all. It does not matter. Amen. Who they might be. It could be John Wayne Gacy. Or Mother Teresa. He offers it to us all. 
We are too involved in situation ethics. Depends on the situation, how I'm going to act. You ought to be a Christian. No matter what. So the relevant question remains. How can one reconcile that principle with one's reality? That, that the blessing that God is and that he gives, he freely offers to all. How can I reconcile that principle with my reality? When I have continually served while others are derelict of duty. I talk about those. Our former pastor used to love to say it. He said somebody's dragging their feet on an uphill pool. Like when we were kids, you go up an incline. And you got a wagon and all your, your playmates is in the wagon and you pulling it. And somebody has the audacity to drag their feet and make the pull even harder. Somebody is derelict of duty. And we complain about their dereliction. There must be a shift. In attitude. And so then we can say these two points of interest. You are no less blessed when God blesses others. You are no less blessed when he blesses others. Verse 31. Not only that, you should be glad when God blesses others. You know, when he blesses those that have been messing with you, that those others, you ought to be glad when God blesses others. Verse 32. You are no less blessed, church, when God blesses others. Verse 31 reads, And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. The elder of the two sons was disappointed, dissatisfied, and altogether, as the scripture tells us, angry with his father about how he graciously and lovingly received his repentantly returning younger brother. Not only did he have an attitude with his daddy, he had an attitude with his brother. And I think that he had an attitude with his daddy because he had an attitude with his brother. He didn't say when the servant said, your brother has returned. He went and told his daddy, your son, not my brother. Too often. Persevering saints, those of us that continue on in the face of all adversity. Too often, persevering saints are disappointed and, and dissatisfied with God's tender treatment of fellow saints who willfully strayed from the way when they easily witnessed God's grace and mercy upon them. We see how God blesses others that ain't doing nothing 
others that have left the church, others that don't pay in church, others that don't do nothing, ain't going to pick up a straw, ain't going to move a piece of paper, ain't going to do nothing. We get mad with them. When God is found blessing them. This elder son, hallelujah somebody, was angry because of how his daddy treated his younger brother. Church, we need to have the attitude of our heavenly father. Amen, somebody. Sometimes we don't know that we have strayed. I say that we have the, the munching sheep disease that he leads us into those at meadow grass, this our shepherd, and we, we feast upon the tender grass he leads us into. And we're so engrossed and so enthralled in eating up the grass that we munch our way right out of his presence. We stray from time to time. I thank God that we have a wonderful Savior. I thank God that he is our shepherd. Amen, somebody. He is that one that's always vigilant, waiting for us to return. Amen, somebody. That elder son did not respond as did the father. That elder son despised his brother and he coldly challenged his father, proving his perseverance in his dutiful sonship, saying, I have served well and have never gone against your rules. And you never gave me an opportunity to entertain my friends. You didn't even give me a kid, that is a baby goat, not the fatty cat, but a baby, just a goat. He scolds his father. He challenges his daddy. What an attitude to have. What attitudes we have against God. that we think we don't have. It says that you wouldn't even give me an opportunity to entertain my friends. But when your wayward son returns, you give him usual and unusual courtesies. He doesn't deserve what you're giving him. Jumping ahead just a little bit. This elder son thought he deserved what he was getting because of what he was doing. But the Bible tells us that when we have done all that we have been called to do, we ought to count ourselves as unprofitable servants. We haven't done any more than what we were supposed to do. And God don't owe you anything else. Brothers and sisters, our Heavenly Father's kindness to others does not detract anything from you. Amen, somebody. This young man, this elder son, still had his double portion of inheritance that was due him. When the father was kind to the younger son, it didn't take away from what was due him. He just needed to keep on doing what he was doing. 
Don't worry about what the other person is doing and not doing. That's when you get in trouble. The Father, loving Father, you really need to see the character of this Father. This Father could have said, I can do what I want with what's mine. He could have put that boy in his place. But this father is kind, courteous, and he took the time not to scold his son, but to answer him, to let him know why he was doing it. The father answered his angry elder son, reassuring and reminding him because he was always with him. He had access to all that his father had. Everything. This younger son came back flat broke. Messed up from the flow up with nothing. And yet, the elder son laying up there in the lap of luxury got the nerve, got the goal, the unmitigating goal to get mad with his daddy. How many of us get mad with God when he blesses a racist? How many of us get angry with God when he blesses a rapist? Hmm. The son didn't earn. He didn't earn his father's blessings. He was getting what he was getting because he was the son. You're getting what you're getting from God because you are his son. Son doesn't have anything to do with gender in the Bible. It, when it talks about that, it has to do with inheritance. He didn't earn his inheritance. That was his daddy's goods. He didn't earn his father's blessings. They were freely given because he was his father's son. God freely gives us salvation. There's nothing we can do to earn salvation. Nothing. He freely gives it to us. And we need to know that there is Happiness unspeakable for those that stay close to the father's house. That boy that went away but no longer in touch with that happiness, he remembered. But he was no longer in touch, he remembered. But the boy that stayed home, he was in touch with his father's blessings day after day, day in and day out. The son, he kept his double portion of inheritance. That son was allowed a place at his father's table continually. When his little brother, somewhere feeding hogs, they would have gladly eaten the husks, the food, the slop that the hogs were eating. And he came to himself. God has a way of causing us to come 
to ourselves and remember how it was when you stayed close to his house. When you enjoy the benefits of God's cool breeze, it doesn't make it any less cool for others. Amen, somebody. Here you are enjoying God's cool breeze as if you are the only one. So it is with Christ. Christ is all that he is in all who believe. Whether they have strayed or stayed. Not only that, church, unless we bore you any longer. You should be glad when God blesses others. You know those others we talked about earlier? And you, you, hear, you hear of their well-being and well-doing, and, and they have messed you up, messed you around. When you hear of it, you all say, praise the Lord. You all start shouting. Start dancing. Go tell the world about it. About how good your God is. You should be glad when God blesses others. Verse 32 reads, it was meat or it was right. Further, it can be understood as it was due. When you repent, you meet the requirements of God and what God does for you. When you repent, you'll do that. Because that's what he said. And that's what he'll do. That's just another Bible study. It was meat. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again. It was lost and is found. We can all see ourselves there. And you should be glad when God blesses others. Now, the second part to the father's two-part explanatory answer further addresses his son's anger-driven grievance against his meat or right treatment toward his wasteful, wayward younger brother. Church God wants us to know that he shows mercy to whomever he will. Amen, somebody. And you ain't got nothing to say about it. Am I right? God will treat you right despite how wrong you've been as long as you come back right. The boy came to himself. That's a symbol and sign and significant of the fact that he repented. He changed his mind. He said, I had it better back at my daddy's house. The same daddy's house he left because he no longer wanted to be under his daddy's rule and authority. He had a change of mind. He said, I shall arise and go back to my father. And he went back and told his father, I have sinned against you. When you confess, the understanding is, is that you agree that you were wrong. The father told his son it was me to write that we celebrate 
and rejoice the return of your brother. He didn't say my son. He told him your brother. And when God is blessing others, you need to say he's blessing my brother. When God is blessing others, he says he's blessing my sister. When God is blessing others, you ought to get glad. A family is only as strong as the weak in the family. Who does not want to see the weak become strong? Father told his son it, it was meet or it was right that we celebrate and rejoice the return of your brother. He was repentant. He, he returned the right way. The elder son, let's look at his character just a little more. No doubt felt superior. Amen. There's always some low-hanging fruit. You got to put it where they can grab it. It's like when you got educated. And them over there didn't. Superior. And he felt that way because he didn't go away. Didn't mess up like his brother who went away and mishandled his blessing. God's salvation to us is a blessing. Everything God does for us is a blessing. And how often do we mishandle it? Every day. I'm in the habit of every day saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Give me another chance. That self-centered, selfish attitude is surely a sign of being lost in the blessing. If you want to know if you're lost in the blessing, you determine whether or not you're self-centered if it's all about you. We're living in an age of humanity that has to do with humanism. Where man is at the center of everything, not God. That's self-centered. Selfish, just want it for yourself. Not to share it with anyone else. That selfish and self-centered attitude is surely a sign of being lost in the blessing. That elder son was so thoroughly blessed, thoroughly blessed, through and through blessed, that he felt he was better than his bad-mannered brother. And all of us got a bad-mannered brother. Guess what? He might be you. But who is it that wouldn't rejoice when a substance-abusing loved one recovers? Who is it that wouldn't rejoice when a cancer-ravaged loved one recovers? Who is it that would not rejoice when a derelict and destitute loved one recovers? Who is it that would not rejoice when a missing child is found? At the words 
of this gracious and kind father, son that was so thoroughly lost in the blessing, he himself became found. We can ascertain that because you didn't hear anything else coming out of that boy's mouth after his daddy spoke. Am I right? It tells us that the boy relented and he listened to his father and he got the lesson. Are you getting the lesson today? Hmm. At the words of his gracious and kind father, The word of God will expose and correct your attitude yes, yes. if you let it. Yes. Just stop going to God's word every morning and say, I got my dose of devotion. Rather than getting a lesson. The blessed word of God will show you where you stand and the way you should go. For the word of God says that his word is a lamp unto our feet. It shows us where we're standing, where you are in life, how you are in life. And it is a a light unto our paths. It shows us the way we ought to go. Because we don't know. I don't care how much you read his word. It still don't mean you know which way to go. The Holy Spirit is just like a mechanic. And a mechanic is only as good as his tools. Am I right? He can have all the knowledge he wants. But if he doesn't have any tools, he can't do no work. Excuse my grammar. The Holy Spirit can only work on you in direct proportion as you have the word of God in your life. It is the tool he works with. That word, and we'll get out of your way was in the beginning. That word was with God. That word was God. Is anybody listening to me? And that word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Am I right about it? Yes, Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. That word was made flesh, born of a virgin. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Reared in a place called Nazareth. He ministered in a region called Galilee. He died for our sins on a hill called Calvary was buried in a borrowed tomb. But bright early, on that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth, in his hand, in his hand, nothing like been in the hands of the Lord. Isn't it a wonderful thing to be in his hands? Hands that can't fail. Hands that will pull you through. Hands that will carry you through. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. So that when you find yourself lost, in the blessing. He can pull you 
into where you need to be. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to remember that the blessing that God is and that he gives, he freely offers to all. And we need to know that we are no less blessed when God blesses others. And that we should be glad when God blesses others. Praise his name, church. Praise his name, church. Praise his name. There may be someone that doesn't know the Lord in the pardon of sin, perhaps is still in the pig pen of life, trying to find a way out, trying to get, as it were, a new lease on life, trying to do something other than what they've been doing. For well, that way is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but by him. So you must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe unto righteousness. And it is with your mouth that confession is made unto salvation. If you believe today that God raised Jesus from the dead for you, you can come today and come and do it in a public way. You say, well, pastor, why should I do it in a public way? Because Jesus died publicly Amen. where everyone could see. He says, if you are ashamed to own him here on earth, he will be ashamed to own you before the Father. Make that step, that step of faith. Believe in and trust him that God is real, that what Jesus did is enough to turn your life around. If that's you today, you can come. Come to him. Today, come to him without delay. Just come. And those who are in viewing land, if you want to make that step, just call us at area code 314 4215288. Leave your name, number, and a brief message, and someone will get with you. And to help you make that step of faith, I wouldn't procrastinate. Procrastination is the thief of time. You think you have time. I wouldn't trust what you think. Only what you can do in the moment. For tomorrow is not promised to us. If we are here tomorrow, it's only because it's God's bidding. You have, a, you have the unique opportunity to accept him today. He wants you to come. He desires that you come. So come. He says, as he stands on the precipice of eternity, in the Christological standing invitation, come unto me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, rest unto your very soul. Your soul is tired because of sin. And if you are saved 
but you are unchurched, you may come. I recommend Greater Linden Missionary Baptist Church because I know her to be a, an, a healthy church, a spiritually healthy church. Come. He invites you to come. We invite you to come. Come today. Come without delay. Father in heaven, in the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord, we thank you for this very, very unique moment that we've had today where we were blessed beyond measure in and of your word. And we pray for that one father who is making the decision about Christ. Reasoning can only take you so far. And where reason stops, faith must begin. Father, so that one who is in the valley of decision Pray that you will go alongside of them in the person of your Holy Spirit and help them, Father, as they open their hearts to you. Receive them, Lord, we ask. And yes, we are thankful for your holy word that we find to always be both lamp and light. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it. In Jesus' name and for his sake we say, amen, amen, amen. 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 God bless you. And as we prepare to leave this place, but never the Lord's presence, we do so in this fashion. of Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with all of us, henceforth, now, and forevermore, let every believing soul say, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church, and go in peace. Go in peace.